Okay, today we're going to make a batter bowl. This nice big batter bowl, but before I make this, I have to get that a little closer to center. <laughs> okay, well now we're centered and I'm going to open this up. I do have a how to throw a tall bowl in links below with or without the rib. I'm going to use the rib today because I like to use the rib. I'm going to open this up and throw a tall bowl. A batter bowl is just a tall bowl with a spout and a handle. And the center is open the same way. Always pull your hands across, give it a pull. And I'm going to give it one more pull. Then I'm going to go in and tidy up the bottom. Again, I'm not going to let the top get too thin. This is a kitchen bowl. I really like a, a nice rim in the kitchen bowl so it stands up to going in the dishwasher and being used in the kitchen. Needs another pull. And I like a batter bowl to be a sturdy bowl all the way around because it is going to go in the kitchen. So now I've got a tall bowl. I uh, got one more little, a little taller bowl. Okay, now I'm going to open up using the rib. I like just, uh, I throw all my bowls to the ribs. I think I said that before. I'm going to go down about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to leave this bowl quite tall and cylinder like because it's going to be a batter bowl and it just has to, in my mind, be tall and cylinder-like. So there is, there it is, I just opened a little bit more. Again, as I said when I was throwing the other bowls, you have to watch when you're using the rib because you can go too far past the support, but I didn't. So I'm going to tidy this up and make sure it's slidey all the way around. Give it a pull. When you throw with the rib, you can kind of open up your particles and when I give it a throw I compact them and squeeze them all tight together. I got a bit of a messy bottom. I'm going to clean it up with my thumb. I like to I like to run my thumb opposite direction. Usually when you're throwing you're, you're throwing on that side. I'm going to run my thumb opposite direction that way. The wheel's going the same way just my thumb isn't and it kind of just gets rid of all of that unevenness. This is going in the kitchen. You don't want a bumpy uneven bottom. Okay so now I want to do the spout and it's kind of a just a jump in there and do it movement. I'm going to support with my left hand and I'm going to take my right hand and my fingers wet and I'm just going to make a spout. Now it seldom ends up round after that so just get a damp sponge, run it around the inside being careful not to. And you can tidy up that when it's not quite so wet. So there we are. We have the, the batter bowl and the spout. It needs to be trimmed and the handle put on. I like this handle better than a mug handle. But anyway, before we get that far down the way, we're going to have to just wait for time to go by. And then you'll see me trim and put the handle on. So time has gone by and the batter bowl is ready for trimming. It's level on the wheel. Sometimes your boards aren't completely level. The board is held on by little gobs of clay and sometimes they're not completely level. So if the needle touches all the way around, it's level. If it's not, if one side's higher, you could just <coughs> level that guy. And then you want it in the middle. The needle ear want to touch all the way around. If there's a side that doesn't touch, you just sort of gently move the scratch away from you. Anyway, but I'm centered and I'm going to start trimming. I'm trimming on a, a wet board and before I put it on I put some water under there and just kind of hold it on. It's held on by a layer of slip. So I'm just going to trim and then I'm going to just, I like to give it this cut and I got some clay there. I can tell by the sound um, the higher the pitch, the thinner the clay. If you do that and your clay moves, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to get this some um, definition here. And there. And I like to undercut it when I'm trimming there a bit and just curve that into that line. One, I like it to sit on that raised pedestal. And two, if you're glazing, you've got a handle on that pot. And I quite often dip the rims in glaze. And a handle on the bottom is nice. I'm 
You're going to do the middle. When you're trimming a pot, I like it to look as tidy and trimmed on the bottom as it does on the top. It has to look finished top and bottom. And I'm just working on the radius. I got a little bit more, but not a lot. So now it's trimmed. And be careful because as you're spinning around, this guy's going to come and get you. So, so now I want this to sponge it off. You don't want to be able to tell where your trimming ended and your throwing started. Just give it a layer of, um, hold your sponge, it'll bring out those small, small particles. It'll seal the clay and hide all your trimming marks. And I'm just going to see if I can get rid of them. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take this off. I like to put it on a bat, on a wet bat. And I like to put a layer of paper between my pot and the bat because often if you put your clay on the wet board, your clay will stick to it and then, then you can run into some drying issues. But if you put a layer of paper between your pot and your bat you're putting it on, it'll stick to the paper. When the paper dries, it won't stick to the board and you won't have any drying issues. So we're going to put that on and lift it. <laughs> lift it and lift, there it goes. You'll be careful that you don't lift it and you throw it across the room. Okay, so we're going to turn that over and I'm going to put it back on the wheel because when it's on the board, I have messed up the rim. And I'm just going to tap. You can hear it release. And you can see that's messy. So I just want to make it tidy. I'm going to center it, fairly centered, a little bit centered. Because we're not throwing it now, we're just tidying it. So that's close enough. And I'm just going to sponge that tidy. Now before Jim came in here <laughs> with all his cameras, I had a bunch of little chamois things and we cleaned up so we looked nice for you. And I don't know where they went. So if you don't have a chamois, you can just use a plastic bag and I like just to I like to sponge and tidy the rim I like to use a chamois but <laughs> until I get my messy studio back I'll use a plastic anyway I like to use a plastic works well that's why I didn't use a chamois because it could tell you about the plastic it brings all the little particles to the surface making your clay a little bit um, tougher and more chip resistant I'm just going to make sure my clay is round and there we are, we're trimmed and it's ready for a handle. I like to put a ribbon handle on a batter bowl. I like this grip much more than a mug handle. I find when you get a hold of the mug handle and the batter bowl is full of stuff, they get quite heavy. These just fit your hand and it's a lot more ergonomic, a lot more comfortable. I also like the rib ribbon handle. Um, the way the glaze runs down the ribbon in the troughs, it just it looks pretty. So I like it a lot better. It's more comfortable. Um, the ribbons uh, dis uh, disperse the glazes. But anyway, um, I have an extruder that makes that handle. They come out of the extruder looking like this. If you don't have an extruder, you can, uh, and you want a ribbon handle, you can just throw one. I've got this center. I've got legs below on how to center, and I've got the center, and I'm just going to throw, I'm not going to go all the way down to the bat, I'm just going to throw a ribbon. I'm going to open up, and that's fairly tall, but you want it to be, uh, how do you say it, when you want your walls to be even, so when you're throwing quite often, it's thicker at the bottom, you want to go past, so when you cut it off, you don't have a thick part and a thin part if that makes sense. So you can use your fingers to make a, a groove, but they don't make that nice of a groove. I just have a stick. So you can do a stick groove, you can do a finger groove. They're similar, I guess. I like the sharpness of the stick groove. You're allowed to like what you like and the way you want to make it. So there's basically your ribbon handle. I'm just going to get 
bit of the messy lines and tidy it. I would take my needle and just cut that off at the bottom and then cut it there. And then now I've got a ribbon handle that I could let firm up and I could use like the one extruded, but I don't want to. <laughs> so anyway, that's the ribbon handle. You can also, um, you can pull a handle, which I'll show you in a moment. I've never pulled a handle sitting at the wheel before, uh, but the cameras are here, Jim is here, and the lights are here, so the action's here. I'm going to pull a handle, and usually when you pull a handle, you start out wide at the top and it tapers down to thin for a mug handle, but this handle, if I were to use this handle, I would want it wide and then skinny and then wide again. So to do that, <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> sorry, go to work, you step on the wheel. Um, Get my hand started, I step on the gas. Anyway, to do that, I'm going to just uh, start pulling it wide. And I'm not going to pull it round. I'm going to pull it wide between my fingers. And I'm going to leave the bottom a little thicker. And I'm just going to kind of pull in the middle. And you can see it's thick, thick, and then thin. I'll show you. Thick, and then thin, then thick again. Now, I've got one already made, and I'm just doing this just carefully between my fingers. Notice I turn it around back and forth so it's even. So then I would take this off and let it firm up. And it would turn into this one. Just like that, with the magic of cameras. Well, actually you saw that, so there was no magic. Uh, so then I've got this, and now I've got a thickness. I don't want to put it on this batter bowl. I do want to use the ribbon handle. But I've got a thickness now that if I were to put this on the bowl, I could put it on, it's very hard to put it on the sloppy bowl, I could put it on and I would have some um, body to work with and to attach to and to give it a nice, and to give it a nice line. See there I would have some, I like to do some finishing marks. I like a handle that's put on to look like it's put on. And also these, these marks would give that glaze somewhere to run down and, and look pretty. But, but So the, there's a pulled handle for your battle bowl. Again, I would still use, I could be a little closer together. I would still use this type of handle to get a hold of the bowl. So, but now what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're going to put the ribbon handle on. And I'm going to do that sitting here too. Not only have I not pulled a handle, I've never put a handle on sitting at the wheel, but hopefully I don't step on the gas and then, yeah, I could turn it off. <laughs> there you go. Comments from the cameraman. Turn it off so if I try to make it go, I don't throw my batter bowl all over. Not only have I never pulled a handle sitting at the wheel before, I haven't put one on the batter bowl before, but hey, as I said, cameras are here, actions are here. So my uh, extruded handle is nine inches long. I've got it moistened and it's tidy and it's waiting. And I want to make sure when I put this handle on that I've got it directly behind the spout, that I'm not off to one side. It has to be centered. So I'm going to put the ruler on and I'm going to measure this space and that space to make it the same. I don't often use a ruler. I could. I just put the needle on there and that goes to the end of the texture on the needle and that goes to the end of the texture just about a little bit. There we go. And again, I'm just really fussy. Quarter inch probably doesn't, or a sixteenth of an inch probably doesn't make that much. Never mind. There we go. End and and I can see through the ruler, and in the middle of the ruler, I just make a line. Then I have that line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to texture this side, score, and score this side. Add some water, and scratch it up a bit more. And then I'm going to get my handle, and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to scratch, score that, and score that. 
and then I'm going to put them, oh, i got to turn it so I can see, put them score to score on either side. And I like this middle line because you can see if you're centered or not. So you can see that you're same distance between, that that is as wide as that. There we go. And then I'm just going to support, and I'm going to take my finger down those grooves. The nice thing about making a lot of mugs is I don't have a fingernail on there, and I got a nice round tool because I wear my fingernails off when I'm making mugs. So, so then I can just sponge that tidy and get rid of that mark. And then sponge that one tidy. Now this is kind of floppy, so what I like to do is get it to the angle I, I want. The handle needs to lean up against something. So I'm just going to put that over, and I'm just going to lean the handle back onto something and let it firm. I'm going to support that handle, let it dry, and then I will go tidy up this uh, messy bits a bit more. Um, it's just messy, but the bowl is soft. I just like it to dry. Everybody's happy, and I'll get to it later. So there's the batter bowl with the ribbon handle, the pulled handle, the thrown handle. I do like the ribbon handle better. It's just a more comfortable bowl.